In this second example, I want to use the example of a smart law firm who's using a large language model, third party, and how ISO 42001 really applied to them. So in way of a quick introduction, smart law firm, uh, the problem that they're trying to tackle is they're considering options of either using a third party like OpenAI or self-hosting an open source large language model, meaning they want to use a chatbot to re return smart results. And two ways they could go about that is simply integrating with OpenAI or they could self-host one of these large language models and train the data themselves. So some of the kind of considerations that they were going through are, you know, what is the economics of the situation? How much, how much is it going to cost us to build this ourselves versus partnering and buying it? So is there a return on investment to build it for ourselves? The other thing that they were thinking is, is risk. Do we take on the risk of owning this platform and, and maintaining it and the results that it's going to re, uh, return to our, our users? Or do we want to kind of share and transfer that risk to a third party um, to, to mitigate our risk strategy? The other thing that they were thinking was uh, data sources and accuracy. So how do you even go about training a large language model to get it sufficient to return great results? And some of their experimentation with OpenAI was already returning pretty good results. So what did they choose to do? So their solution ultimately was to integrate with a third party. And uh, the reason that they chose to do that was because they did want to transfer some of that risk. They felt like that there was a better chance of them getting good results consistently by using something like OpenAI than trying to train their own system. Uh, the bottom line is that they also didn't have the resources to invest in an engineering team to build something. So although they're a law firm, they were thinking maybe we spin up this engineering arm build a minimum viable product and have a product that we can uh, offer to the market as a standalone. But for them, that wasn't their core focus. They didn't want to invest the resources to do that. They didn't want to build a team, so it made more sense to partner. And then the last thing uh, they wanted to be able to do is to, to be really clear in their contracts um, with their customers that they own the responsibility of validating the results that come out of their AI system. So for example, if you're working on a, a, a case, let's say, and you want to review case law as precedent uh, to be able to present in a trial, instead of doing the research, you could ask this application some questions and get some case law review to be able to use in your case. The risk that they were trying to mitigate is what if you got the wrong answer or you got bad advice? Well, then you could potentially be held responsible for that bad advice. So they said to mitigate that risk, they're really going to train, they're going to communicate to their users, they're going to make clear in demos, they're going to make clear contractually that this is guidance only. And any results you need to validate and double check for yourself. So it'll definitely make you faster, it'll give you great ideas, it'll make your research easier, but it's still your responsibility as a user of this product to confirm the results. And through that training and clarity, they were, they were able to further reduce that risk. So what is the valid, what's the value of certification for a company like this? So, so number one is before considering ISO 42001, they didn't really have a thinking model. They didn't have a way to consider what risk exists and what risk do not exist. For example, they had never even heard of an AI impact assessment. They weren't considering the ideas around transferring risk versus accepting a risk. So ISO 42001 gave them a framework to think about risk management principles for AI. The, the second thing certification could do for a company like this is give them a legally defensible approach. If you build a great program, a thoughtful program that you take seriously and you maintain, if something bad happens, like you do get sued or someone does get angry, you can point back to your program and it's very defensible. It shows that you took a thoughtful approach, that you use reason, you weren't being irrational. And that's really helpful if you need to explain to someone why you took a certain approach or even if you're getting sued in certain cases, it at least helps you cover all your bases so that you don't feel blindsided. So that might be another really good reason to do it. And the third reason to do it is they are selling this product to other attorneys. And other attorneys have the same question. How do I know that you're taking AI seriously? You've considered these risks. And obtaining certification for them was a means for them to gain customer trust, to say, hey, look, we've thought about the risk of AI, the responsible use of it, how you can trust us doing AI impact assessments. And we've built that into our product and you can rest assured that you, know, you can trust us. And at the end of the day, that helped the company, smart law firms, sell more of their product in a, in a great way. 
So those are some of the business reasons they might choose 42,001. I think if you're thinking about integrating with something like OpenAI or even self-hosting your own large language model, hopefully you can see how ISO 42,001 principles would help you make a decision on how you might want to pursue. So I hope these two examples really help uh, make some of these more abstract concepts more concrete and how they might apply to your firm. And what I want to do next is close out this course by sharing some free resources with you and some additional learning opportunities, some websites, some other ISO frameworks that as you continue your journey in investigating risk management and, and artificial intelligence, that you can continue doing your homework and educating yourself. So I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.